those of you who missed the broadcast uh, before were rudely yanked off by um, by the witches and, <laughs> and, and nonsense they've been doing today, uh, and for a for a while, I'm really disappointed if I if I must say so. Um, it, it's been horrendous. I wanted to bring it back to TikTok because we're also live there. Um, I've abandoned Facebook for now, so we're doing YouTube TikTok and Instagram. Hopefully, I can get that to work. So before the break, we were talking about um, Bigger Than Africa, a Netflix documentary uh, that yeah. Pastor Toby was one of the people who made me watch. In, in, to be honest, some people actually, an agency called me up and wanted me to watch it and give my honest critique. Then Pastor Toby just reached out to me a couple of days later. Have you seen this? I said, ah, people actually called me and told me to watch it. Um, to be very honest. And then I watched it yesterday with Wifey and we ended up not doing anything the whole morning. As in, she left her business and sat down right. and was documentary. She didn't, she, didn't, she didn't cook those lovely. She didn't cook those lovely edges and stuff. She 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 had to wait a bit and then go and cook later. But while we're watching this, she could not get up. She was riveted uh, <laughs> to the spot, and I do understand why. Mm -hmm. And like we were saying earlier on, um, I saw a black American, full blood American, with yeah. tribal marks. Tribal mm -hmm. marks we as Americans have. This gentleman who's younger than me, but happens to be a king in South Carolina, the king yeah. of the. Uh, uh, the Empire in America. Uh, his Royal Majesty, I have his name here. Uh, his, his Royal Majesty, Oba Adegbolu Adefumi, the King of Oyotun, a Yoruba community in the United States of America. And I was proud to be African. I, proud to be Yoruba. Like Pete said earlier on, I'm sure there'll be documentaries these, uh, uh, like these for other tribes in, in Nigeria. The Fulanis have done amazingly well. The Igbos, their culture and their entrepreneurship is something Harvard needs to actually study. Um, yeah. And also the Hausa, the Kanuri, um, the uh, Alabari, the ethnic, there's so many rich cultures uh, that Nigeria needs to import to the world instead of us just borrowing foreign cultures. And just, I'm just trying to give you a recap before because I'm leading to what Pastor Toby was about to say. Yeah. Um, and he was speaking so well, so I, I'm heartbroken that we actually lost uh, that video. And there was a quote I made. This was where we were. Uh, there was a post I made earlier on putting the picture of Martin Luther King Jr. and this Oimbo guy. And I was like, pop quiz, one of them died for you. Which one? Choose one. And it was a raging debate, 535 comments, people on either sides of the polarity. Uh, and then today I decided to Touch it uh, up again. Very quick, sorry, I don't mean to cut you at all. Someone keeps saying, maybe it's true or false, that the uh, producer or the director of the movie is here. The producer, if the producer of the director of the movie is here, please say hello. Let me bring you live on and say something. Yeah. That would be very nice. Sorry to cut you, sir. No, no. I'm off. That, that's an excellent input to be entirely honest. So back to what I was saying, uh, people were saying, how dare you compare Martin Luther King with us? And I'm like, guys, you need to wake up from your delusions. 
Martin Luther King fought for us black people. Of us, they run go Yankee now. We're running to America. We're running to Canada. If not people like Martin Luther King, who actually died in the struggle, for the struggle, you'd have been going there to do slave work. The fact that there's equality, the semblance of it, even though Black Lives Matter and all the freedom fights have been going on, uh, there's a semblance of equality, even though there's no true equality. However, there would not have even been the semblance if not for people like Martin Luther King. And then, Jesus, the Oyibo mentality, on the other hand, I'm talking about the true savior who lived, who was born in Israel. His name is Yeshua uh, in Aramaic or Yahushua in Hebrew. He's the true savior. He isn't white. He doesn't have blue eyes. He doesn't have blue eyes. And the whole ideology, Africa was in Acts chapter 8. The first Christian was in Acts chapter, the first African Christian convert, the Ethiopian eunuch um, that worked with the Kandake, coming from Jerusalem, returning to Ethiopia. It was there. So you can't say these Oibo people brought Christianity to us. They didn't bring Christianity to us. They brought a version of mind control to us and took our ancestors to slaves. And these ancestors now took our rich culture because if you watch that documentary it is all about the slave route through badagri through ghana through um some other parts of the west african coast now going to make settlements in the u.s brazil cuba trinidad and tobago and and they took out our ancestors and then they gave us a version of Christianity that they have used to manipulate and, sorry to say, it's my personal opinion, and mentally enslave us for a very long time. So it was at this juncture, like I started speaking. Just, uh, that, that, that is true. It's not just yes. your opinion. It's the opinion of many people who the church, the conventional church, don't know how to reach anymore. They think it's difficult for them to reach the, in quotes, Unbelievers, but they are there's a big disconnect because there's a foreign religion in our system, and after a while, no matter how long it goes on for, after a while, people will start asking questions. Mm. We're in the season of people, a generation, the people, the kind of people I pastor, and the kind of people that listen to me and that listen to yourself, they they are asking questions after like 100 years of certain kind of Pentecostalism mm. entering into their blood. So they, they are beginning to don't do that, man. They are beginning to ask questions. So um, it, it, it's not just your opinion. That's what I'm trying to say. That documentaries like Bigger Than Africa, which I've watched, I've watched it more than 10 times. I appreciate it. I appreciate it because it causes us to think. And yes, I'm, anyone who's known our work in the UK knows, um, first of all, people ask um, um, funny questions like, is this the Bible? It is your leaders that are not practicing the Bible. The, 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 pent, the, the church is the act of the apostles' church. One. They had communal living. One. Absolutely. Two, out of their communal living came um, an ecosystem. That's what you find in the Bible. Hmm. So, and it, so we have to look at these things and then create, make sure that whatever we see today matches up with that. If it don't, then out, out of their economy comes what you are doing, what the free nation is doing, feeding the poor and all those stuff. Mm. If those things are not there, there's a big disconnect. A big, big, big disconnect. And so uh, the, the Greek culture that came into the church, which is your sitting theater style, there is thousands of people sitting. We've proven that. We've proven that in a city like London, that doesn't happen in London. We've broken the barrier of that. And I'm, we only broke it to say that's not the way forward. So 
I'm just saying that documentaries like Bigger Than Africa makes people ask questions and you must not be too caged to ask questions. Mm. Absolutely. You see, there was a question I asked you today. Growing up, I was made to realize that every African, my father, now, now I'm not blaming this entirely on Christianity. I'm blaming this on both imported religion, Christian and Islam. They are not indigenous African faiths. They came from somewhere. And both of them, because my father is Muslim, my father is um, Pentecostal, sorry, Catholic. And both of them looked down on African culture as pagan, um, looked down on African culture as idolatry, looked down on um, African culture as um, evil. And I'm not an expert on Islam or the Holy Quran or the Prophet Muhammad so I cannot give judgment or give an opinion on what I'm not uh, on. However, from my walk with Christianity, you complain about the traditional masquerades, and then you give us Santa Claus when you masquerade. <laughs> you complain about the idol, uh, and then you bring a shrine where there's a white bear, there's a white Jesus, uh, and then you go to that shrine Pray and, and these objects are there. Then the Pentecostals point at Catholics and say, oh, they, they, they're idolatry. But then the Catholics go and touch the chair of their Jew and pray to the chair of their Jew. I, there's, there's a video out there of people who are going to touch the chair of a popular Jew and venerating a chair. <laughs> you talk about idolatry. You talk, you blame us or ourselves and we look down upon the 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 the, the, the ideologies uh, the um, social constructs of our ancestors in favor of the Oyimbo ones and then here's the thing here because our cultures were not allowed to evolve pastor yeah they, I think we remember them only for female circumcision killing of twins tribal marks because that was where they were stopped yeah christianity as we know today also through that evolution islam is also through that evolution there was a time when the church found it worthy to give guns to prisoners to go and fight whole crusades in the name of god don't yeah. trust me you can watch, there's so many Netflix documentaries. There is Vikings, The Last King, uh, Nightfall. These are all movies based on how powerful the Pope was, how powerful religion was, and how manipulative it was. So, so it's like I, I'm, I'm watching um, Christianity sometimes even Islam and say, oh, Islam, they're always jihadists. How do you think Christianity started? The whole of the Crusades were one big jihad, if you can call it that. So these religions that have not been refined by time are now looking down on our African faiths that were never allowed to evolve. They were truncated uh, people practice them in hiding, then all of a sudden, I'm seeing South Carolina, where there's a young man who's younger than me, proud to be a babalao. <laughs> Pastor, what is your, or what are your thoughts in that regard? Uh, again, some of us have challenged the boundaries of religion. We've pushed it. We've pushed it to the limit. So, my take is simple. 
there must be there must be things like this that causes us to ask questions. No, let me tell you. Ask ask pastors, top pastors in your country. Oh, well, I have to say your country. It's my country, but it's my second country. Um, ask pastors. Do their kids go to church? Mm. If the if their kids are not put in ad administrative positions like um, uh, doing some work for the church on which they live, would they go to church? They won't go to church. They know the truth. I know all of them. Hmm. Uh -huh. So, and that's because they educated their kids in countries where their kids are empowered to ask questions. Mm. So their kids ask them questions, and the only way you keep such kids is to put them in position so that they can be active and feel more important than their mates. So otherwise, the fundamental beliefs, the fundamental beliefs are faulty beliefs, and they know if they are faulty beliefs. But what I don't understand about either it's African parents or African pastors or politicians, what I don't understand about them is their extreme stubbornness to apologize, to say, we got this culture wrong. And when people question what some of us believe, your churches, your culture, is what produced the current Nigeria. I don't know why you can't see that. It's, 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 it's baffling. Hmm. Why can you not see that that generation and that culture, in co some part of that culture, of not asking questions, of not evolving, produce the current nation or continent that we have now. Why can't you see that? It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Like a, 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 a pastor or a political leader will still believe he's right. And we're saying, no, debates in countries like this, debates are created so that when you are blinded to see things from just your perspective, debates open your mind. Churches don't, churches don't have debates and they wonder why the nation family prospered this much in this country. We have debates. It's not like a one man. We talk. You can talk like and debates will open up your mind so that you can see things. So um, documentaries, again, like Bigger Than Africa, makes us um, create, and that's what I appreciate about what you're doing, create debates about our culture, our beliefs, our, uh, what we will call, what my dad will call fetish. It was just, no, that's, that's not Jesus Christ. <laughs> it makes you debate it and think about it so that maybe, you are, maybe your thought is superior, but it's never been, it's never been tested. Never been. Mm. 100 years now, Nigeria's so-called Pentecostalism has never been tested by anything. Nothing has tested it. It's the superiority of one man claiming that he heard from God. And now, guess what, that is mm. Politicians that subdue or subject you to poverty are now saying they heard from God as well. Oh, yes. It's mad. Okay. So, <laughs> so, and then, you know what is also crazy? The pastors who say they heard from God, most of the things they said they heard, mm. does not happen. <laughs> so you're wondering, in Nigeria now, you have like four, five, six pastors contesting against themselves, saying that God told them they will win. So okay. you're thinking, can you go back to your God and, and your God agree on one person? <laughs> It's a joke. I hate to say this, but COVID was an eye opener. Sadly, so many lives were lost with COVID, but COVID also showed the vulnerability of the church. All of a sudden, we saw that, hey, you guys all did January 1st from December 31st. <laughs> and none of y'all saw COVID. Like, not one of you. And then, all of a sudden, your churches are closed, you're sitting at home, and then you're fighting the government. We're hearing all sorts of theories that 5G 
what is causing the COVID and blah, 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 blah. You see, COVID really opened. That was when a lot of people started questioning the churches that have come. These people are not gods after all. You know, and then they were told to sit at home and they had to sit at home and they, they could not travel and, and, and all those things. You see, I just pinned someone's comment. King Melo Soji, I beg you in God's name, send me a message. He said he has a friend that is a Baba Ao living in the UK. I would love to interview him. I would love to talk to him. I would love to see what exactly a Baba Lao is in the modern <laughs> Okay, I would for love those who are watching from UK, Baba Lao means Baba means father, and Awo means um, Awo means oracle. Oracle. So the it's, the, it's the father or the consortium or the um, consult of some sort for oracles. So, so please talk to this your guy. Um, I would love to have an interview with a UK based or a US based Babalao. If you know any of them, That's send. Pretty... Yes. Someone said now. He said um, the he mentioned another religion which I won't mention because I have so many friends that um, he said that, that um, they use voodoo sand readers sand. He said, mm. but my question is, and I think you will be able to answer that better. That is, with David consulted David, the, the king of uh, that became the king of Judah, then the king of Israel. He consulted three, three mediums mm. when he wants to go to war. One of it is the Urim, then the mm. prophet. I'll say two, so that those who, because people have asked, so do you believe in the Bible? Do you? Some people even said, I don't believe in Jesus and all that. Um, I, the reason why I don't answer Nigerians that much is because I know there's so much hunger and despair in the country. So there's no need to bother myself. You are answering them well. He used the Urium. What is a Urium that the priest? What are these three? things that David consults in order to go to war? Not only David, Pastor Toby. If you can open your Bible right now to the book of Genesis chapter 44, verse 5. I don't have one here, but I'll go on the internet. Why have you stolen my master's silver cup, which <laughs> he uses to be nation? This is a wicked thing that you have done. So David had a cup that he used. So not David, sorry. Joseph had a cup that he used for divination. What is divination? Divination is ifa. Okay. You can call it ifa. You can call it um, uh, casting of lots. We saw the example. The, 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 the disciples that replaced Judas were after casting of lots. Yeah. Casting of lots was very common in the Bible. You see, the white man in his bid to control a faith system that was alien to his culture, absorbed to his culture. refined it with his culture and excreted it out of his culture. So for it to fit into, I'll give you an example, polygamy, for instance. There is no scripture that says a polygamist will go to hellfire. There is no scripture, New Testament or Old, that specifically forbids polygamy. How did polygamy become bad? Because the white culture absorbed the faith into itself, multiplied it, syncretized it, and then excreted it as a waste product of their culture. One man, one woman. No be no Christianity, no be Islam. Now, man, I am not 
saying that I support polygamy. I am just clearly saying that the origin of monogamy is not biblical. It's not uh, African. Let, it is that, from... that, let, me, let me add something to that. Uh, the white man um, preaches uh, monogamy. Now he's trying to force some other um, how do I say this? Because I mean, First uh, question. man, man, woman, woman. He's trying to force it on us, and I can tell you for a fact that eventually, the normal Christian world that is compromised on um, economy will accept it. Mm -hmm. It may take another ten to twenty years. It's compromised. It's an economic church. It's economic. Uh, because it doesn't understand how to raise money by itself. So mm. you come to UK, you go to America, they say um, um, polygamy is wrong and all that. But you tell a man to be with a man and it's right. You're pushing it. They use the black man to push that. It had to be a black man that would be president. So some people say, oh, why do you always talk about the first black president I mean, talk wrong about uh, wrong in court. I'm saying, no, it's not about wrong. You, um, The first time a black man becomes president, it's not just him. Like you posted Martin Luther King, the uh, Jesse Jacksons of this world, the El Sharptons, many freedom fighters fought for us to get to that stage. And the first time a black man will be a president, you will leave Syria, but you will attack Libya. <laughs> Libya was doing well. Libya was doing well. So again, I don't want to deviate from the topic. Um, bigger than Africa will cover most side of our lives. Talking to us about, and again, sometimes when I see the division among black people, I don't blame them most times because it's like, we don't know who we are. We don't know who we are. We don't understand our origin. Um, we would rather be entertained than educated. And what we would say to a black man today is, a black man or woman today is, look, the West can afford to be entertained. We can't. You have a country that is about three, four hundred years behind. So we love entertainment. We are three hundred or four hundred years behind the time of Christ. Not this time. That's terrible. That's even more terrible. Years before Christ. That's where we are. We can uh, they, they, the way yeah. that yeah, sorry, please go. You see, Pastor Toby, um, we are not just 300 years behind, we are 300 years behind the time of Christ. That's terrible, and it is there. <laughs> wing, um, real quick, I just want to quickly touch on just braid hair said, So, why did God not create one? two women you see um i don't want to go into this deeply but i like to inform you that genesis said male and female he created them at the beginning and the book of genesis was never completely found um it's a book that's prone to much interpretational error and if you study the antiquities of the jews and the folk tales of the jews you'll realize that there were actually two women there was a woman it's not biblical, but much of what we practice as today's Christianity is not biblical. We don't accept the Lilith doctrine, but we accept that Satan fell from heaven. And there's no scriptural evidence that Satan fell from heaven, except if you go to Revelation that says he will fall from heaven at the end time. So, <laughs> the, the, having a devil that fell from heaven with his angels, and then the angels were now on the earth, is non-biblical. I dare you today, don't go to the book of Revelation. No, that's the end of the world. Show me evidence of before creation, there was a fight in heaven. Show it to me from the Bible. You would not be able to. Now, secondly, another guy here, I pinned his comment while you were speaking, Pastor Toyo. Uh, yeah. K. Toyoye says that he frees 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, prohibits polygamy. I totally disagree with you. You see, this is another error in translation. And this is a very good passage that can show you how dangerous allowing Oimbo people to translate scripture to, to Africans is. 
You see, it says, deacon must be one white man. Now, if you read this in the original Greek Bible, it says, mias geneikas anderes. Mias means one. Geneikas, white. Anderes, husband. One white husband. Do you know there are four different translations to this? One white husband is different from first wife husband. One wife husband means a man who is with one wife. It can be a married man. It can be a husband of one wife. It can be a man who is with his first wife. This was translated to us. Like I told you, their culture absorbed the faith and regurgitated it after modifying it to suit their own idea. So, this aside, like you said, let's go back to the um, original topic so as not to lose transition as we um, officially round off. I want to ask you, Pastor Toby, what is your take personal take now not biblical or pastoral what is your take on things like ifa shongu ele dumari or olodumari those three let's be specific what is your take i think they should be studied uh, one should look at them um, deeply and not discard them like religion, especially mine, um, uh, the one I was practicing Christianity, um, says we should not um, we should not discard them. We should look at it and keep learning as we as black people all over the world evolve. Um, bigger than Africa is one of those. Um, um, documentaries or knowledge books that would allow us to look at them and keep evolving. And I did tell you in our private call that I'm st I'm looking at it, I'm studying it, I'm I'm fascinated, I'm I'm interested. I want to learn the concept of a shoe in our own um, tradition fascinates me because our tradition seems to teach him differently. Is, is looked upon as a wise person who understands how to trick people to do what he wants. And in Genesis, hey, hey, in Genesis yeah, please go. No, 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 no. I'm enjoying you. I just, I just want to keep that in. Issue is not Satan. Just as you yes, said, so, 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 in Greek mythology is the equivalent of Loki. Yes, the so... Uh, yes, yeah, so so and and if you look at him in Genesis, if we're just I mean you've got more um, translations of stuff, but as a simple, straightforward learner, still I am, uh he he seemed to be a trick staff of sort who understands the law and boundaries and he knows how to use it. Mischief, someone just said mischief, he understands it. So that's why I keep saying that, you see, in, in Christianity, as the um, other colored taught us to, it's just painted as he, as something, and people just stay with that, without questioning. I've been a questioning guy. I was a child preacher. I was eight years old when I started preaching. Eight. So it becomes funny when people say, oh, it doesn't fit the Bible, it doesn't say this, and that 5,000 sermons after, I started preaching at the age of 25 in London, 25. I preached from the corners of Peckham all the way to the Prime Minister's office. The Prime, There is no black person that has been in the Prime Minister's office than me on the world. So, I'm just saying that those are, those are things to discard, but I know the word, and I, and I seem to understand and appreciate people who do. That's why we're having this conversation. So comparing what our tradition, to go back to your question and to stay on topic, um, 
our tradition teaches is as something else. So I'm trying to do for the balance. I'm not claiming to be completely clear. I'm just studying it. So I think it's fascinating from Shango to Olodumare. To, it's, it's interesting to know. And I've got friends who are um, traditional kings in Nigeria, very close friends. Some of them you know, and you will be able, you, eventually you'll tell how close I am to them. And they understand those traditions and they come with their own perspective. Mm. I'll stop at that. You see, Pastor Toby, you have spoken so well. Um, I must chip this in. You are not the only one on the job. I'm, I'm not going to claim all. As a matter of fact, there are many things. We had a discussion earlier on off camera. And, and we both shared our perspective on uh, the topic of our traditional belief systems and how they actually, you can be a Christian, for instance, and visit an event where they're doing Shango, for instance, um, because Christianity is not a... As long as Christianity is a faith in your heart, you believe that Christ died, for you, resurrected for you, to cleanse your sin. That's the beginning and end of Christianity. Everything else is obey Christ. And Christ never said you shouldn't go hang out at a club, never said you shouldn't drink, drunk. Uh, you, you, you know all those things. So, But people came and said, don't drink. They've now created a religion, born againism, don't drink, don't do, pray all night, pray all day. I want to ask you, Pastor Toby, mm -hmm. and I put this not just to you, but to everybody listening to me. When Nigeria was under the rule of Ifa and Olodumari and Shongo, were things not better than this? <laughs> my <laughs> grandfather told me a story. Sorry, no. let, let me let you finish. My former father-in-law said, those days I would come from the farm, you will see a woman would put a tray of oranges on the floor. Tied it, she would put a knife and a little purse. You stop there. Oh, oranges. You take the knife, you peel an orange, you cut it, you eat it. She's written the, the price of the, each orange. You eat three oranges, you bring out, let's say each orange is 50 naira. Naira worth of orange. You open her purse, you have a thousand naira note, you put a thousand naira note in there, you understand, and then you take 800 naira as your change zip back her purse cover her up, and the next person that comes takes his own oranges at the end of the day when the woman wherever she is, counts her oranges counts her money and goes home today they carry the orange for head they go down for head let alone the one where you drop leave yeah. so you see, the introduction of christianity Sir, I, I'm, I'm sorry to do this, but I studied sociology, and sociology involves a lot of statistics. If you watched, or for those of you who joined my sermon last week, I spoke on co-variation, how two things are related. Let me give you an example of co-variation. The more money that Toby has, the more designer Toby has. So as you are growing in money, you are getting more designer clothes. Mm. It's mm. a covariate. Now, if I say the more money Toby has, the more wives he marry. That's mm. not related because as you are making money, you are not, I, I don't know you to be that kind of person. So let's look at Christianity in a covariate with the growth of Africa since its introduction, I can tell you the version of Christianity has done nothing but damage us. Because as Christianity is growing in Africa, so is poverty growing. Development is not increasing. Last year, there was an announcement made that about only 2% of Nigerians have 500,000 and above in their accounts. Mm. As of today, that number has dropped to 0.6%. 
meaning 99.4% of Nigerians do not have up to 500k. As of today, a dollar is over 600 naira. So mm. you have less, you have about eight, uh, more than 99% of Nigeria's population has less than $800 in their bank account. It doesn't end there. Our educational system is in shock. Our government is in, is, is in chaos. There is no love in the land. Uh, there's insecurity. There's no safety. So there is no co-variation using Africa as a case study between our important states and growth, love, harmony, living together, progress, wealth, and all of these things. There's no co-variation. If there is, I'll rather, permit me to say, call it illusory correlation. It's an illusion of correlation because it doesn't exist. They will tell you, the more you tithe, God will bless you. Meanwhile, only 0.8% of Nigerians have five, what's 500K, Pastor Toby? Next to nothing. Yeah. So all the tithers, where all the secrets, us where all the dangerous give us so we have done away with our system oh yes it had its flaws it mm. wasn't perfect no system is perfect but and perfect. to marry and mm. Oba Allah and Shog, where things this bad the immediate and short answer is no what's your thing I, and I, and I, I, First of all, I agree with that. A, a nation that stops a people, that stops evolving, they are dangerous people. Mm. You understand? A, a, a normal, and I, I'm looking forward to you coming back to, um, to the UK. When you were here, it was a busy period. There were people that I won't mention that was around. David was around. Everybody was around. So, a normal national, which we call our own church, is an anthropologist. It's one of the first requirements to be a leader. You have to have the study of human societies, um, which is the first religion to us. And James D. mentioned that. But I said all that to say that you don't want to start me on, on talking about Nigeria. It's going to be... we. We've decided to build hospitals instead of auditoriums. Mm. And, and I have to ask myself the question, if I never left Nigeria, would I think like that? Maybe not, because I grew up in a, in a situation, in a place where you, um, you just think of auditorium, not hospitals, and things like that. So... I do agree with you that some things are not necessarily bad as we were told. Question is, for me now, this is my resolve at 40. Either you want to call it Christianity or any other religion. Does it, not the situation of love, you, you can have love in your heart, we don't see that. Does it improve people's lives? Build a better community? instead of a better life, why do I put a wrong mark on the Nigerian Christianity? It tells you to improve your own life through a spiritual being coming down. Instead of building a community, a community. So I then said this to one of the major leaders, again, whose name, uh, name I won't mention, that the poorest person in a prosperous community is richer than the richest billionaire in a degrading, devolving community. So Nigeria, Nigeria can say we have this person as billionaire or that. You, when they are billionaires, you, you have their soldiers carrying AK-47 behind them. I can drive a Euros, which you will call Euros. Euros. <laughs> you, you, you know the person that drives me. Yeah, I can drive a blue one that attracts all criminals by myself, two of us in the car. I understand and believe the system protects me. 
Mm. For you dear billionaire to do that in Nigeria, and you call that rich? Yes, if you go to their churches now, they will tell you how, not even how, they will tell you that you should prosper by yourself, and that's by you giving money to somebody. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, but again, I think it takes time to evolve. Um, I, you know, there are personal conversations that we've heard, which I've said, this is not me like I because I know the person the person is telling me please make my business work this is money please invest for me <laughs> and, and all that so I think again can I do self advertisement for a minute of is course that... <laughs> and it's not even I'm just saying that there are 774 local governments in Nigeria 774 774 across Nigeria. Mm. We intend to build 700 hospitals or healthcare centers. Those are two different things. Healthcare center, which I will have a conversation with you about later. Hospitals and healthcare centers are different. Mm. So far, we've done over 20. And you know all the things that we do. With. I'm just saying that's the new style of church because... Like you said earlier today, Daddy Free, mm. the whole concept of Christ or Jesus Christ, you don't believe the name Jesus. I believe in a way. And I have my reasons for believing Jesus, <laughs> which I think you will, beat, you will beat me to it theologically, but I will beat you to it streetwise. Mm. 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 Theologically, you will beat me. Uh, you see, Pastor Toby, one of the reasons why we're friends is because we always share ideas, we always share uh, belief systems. I respect you a lot, and I also believe you respect me a lot. So it, it, it is why... Should I tell you my street wise? Yes. Okay, so you don't think it should be called Jesus? Mm-hmm. Well, I called you Daddy Fritz, which is not your name. Yeah. And you answer me. Now, now, let me explain I that. Don't even know, I don't even think I know. Of course, I know your name, but I still answer <laughs> that. So if I say Daddy Fritz, you still answer. Wait, wait, no, Daddy Fritz. This is, the, this is the gist part of it. I don't. So, thing is, if I go to somebody now and say, I couldn't that you said, they might think, what, what's the contact? But if I said that the freeze, I think they will write me a million dollar check mm. because that the freeze. But it's not your that is not your name. I you are Yoruba and um, but no. this is the fun part. I'm not even trying. You will beat me theologically. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is more of a moral. The reason why I don't use Jesus is more of. Where did the name Jesus come from? I don't care about nicknames. You can call any, any. You, you can call him Stone or Fish. Oh, sorry, they even said you're Ife Dayo. Ife Dayo, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the fact that it, the name Jesus came from the same people that told our ancestors are slaves. That's why I reject that name. My ancestors, my, my colonial masters are not that sold my ancestors as slave look at me from top to bottom and was what not more than an animal to them cannot give do naming ceremony for my god daddy freeze they are the ones that gave us the name daddy what's daddy the name daddy Abby. what's daddy <laughs> it's them. um it's a long like you said theologically it is no, i'm just playing at this point i'm not trying to no i know and i'm enjoying yeah. it but that's my personal philosophy, and that's what I teach my church. Because one of the things for you to accept and accept that you are not in theory, you must as much you can't reject you can't reject Western education. I, I studied sociology in school. Sociology is not an arm um, um, or battalism or shanguism. It's Western education. You can't throw away all of it. But you can decide to limit its influence, especially when it comes to things of the mind. You know, sociology, I studied colonialism as a sub, uh, as, as 
a minor, and neocolonialism. One of the most powerful tools of neocolonialism is religion. And you see, there's what you call subtle incapacitation, where the influence is powerful but very subtle. I'll give you Netflix, for example. Every Netflix movie or documentary, apart from this um, Bigger Than Africa do, has man and man, woman and woman influence. Everything. I'm watching Riverdale right now with Taste Bud. <laughs> There's a, what's the name of that? Moose and, uh, babe, Moose and who? Sorry? What's the name of that guy? Then they Cheryl and the black lady. They always, there's no, no movie or series on Netflix that does not suddenly put, and I will tell you, even as, as a grown man, I have started feeling some sympathy towards these people. Growing up, I used to see them, ah, no, 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 this is an abomination. But now, all of a sudden, sometimes when they, they cheat on themselves, and it's, it's subtle. It is controlling your mind very subtly. And how neocolonialism still has a power over us by subtly putting things there. A picture of a white god, his name... Is supposed to be the name, a name that was given only 400 years ago. It's supposed to be the name that saves us black people. The name they So, it, that if it, you know, the one you just talked about, what they put on, and man, uh, you know, me, if you want to keep having me to talk to you, if you don't want me to vanish, I can't say that I agree or disagree. <laughs> But I deal with you for where I did now. <laughs> because the first set of people to come against you will be black people. It's a terrible manner of thinking. But I must say this, though. Um, I appreciate the knowledge you're spreading in Nigeria. And I, like I've always said to you, and I try to tell everyone who cares to listen, that I do listen to your to your sermons and your talk and as a free mind, I think. And my question to you now is this, sir. Can I interview you at this point? Go ahead, go ahead, feel free. Who will be next president of Nigeria? <laughs> Put you on this spot. <laughs> you said that you go ahead. You were not expecting that, isn't it? Well, I cannot say who. But I can say we have some likely candidate. Uh, to me, it will be somewhere in between Oshimbajo, Tinubu, and Atiku. Right. Somewhere there. Who do I choose? I have to be very wide as a son out of them. You probably know my choice as my brother and friend, yeah. or you probably know my predilection in that regard. Um, I, I know your person, and I know you, what you... You know what we're arguing today? You said you're not political, and you've always made it a clear point. I said... But if you call me political, all Nigerians must be political because unfortunately we inherited a a bad generation. Mm. Legion culture, the people that got Nigeria in 1960 and before, they gave us a terrible Nigeria. Our parents' generation just decided to destroy every single thing. And it's like, these guys want to go until they ruin everything every single thing. They created the churches we have now, they created everything. Mm. Uh, I won't talk politics, I just wanted to put you on the spot. So, I can, uh, so that the blogs can carry you tomorrow that you support. Like I said, <laughs> OB is a great candidate. Does he have the machinery to get there? I do not really think so. Let me not give an informed political opinion when I'm not an 
analyst or a political scientist. Um, so I'm looking more uh, at those three people because they have the political and political clout to pull off something as big as the election. Um, My they'll... best question that is raised. Sorry, let me just finish this. Okay, oh, sorry. Sorry, it was breaking, so I didn't know you were still. Oh, oh, okay. So it still boils down to Oshimba, uh, Tinubu, and Atiku. But out of them, there's always going to be a Primus inter Paris, um, which I think the election, or as the case may be, a selection, might um, provide us with. So, second question. Okay. Would you create a forum and invite me for political talk. Me plus whoever else. Would you do it? Would you be willing? Of course. Of course. Okay. Really, I charge a fee, but it is you. You can use my platform and do anything you like. It's your house. Me, I don't get money. I don't, I don't get Naira. That's, so I have to do it for <laughs> so free. It, for you, it's free. <laughs> if you don't get Naira, <laughs> even if I give that, which me to not get come and use my platform. Don't worry. It's you. We get, money. we get money. We get money. You know, somebody said end time pastors. Because we are not standing here and doing Robobo Scarababa. <laughs> right. No, but, 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 but again, people, I think someone sent me today, they said I'm the Antichrist. Ah. I, said, what a, I said, what a privileged position to be in. Be the God Antichrist. <laughs> I said, what a, what a position to be in. I'm the Antichrist. I, uh, I've been working for Christ for 17 years of my life. Stayed away from sin. Stayed away from whatever a 25-year-old man should be doing. We expect Daddy Freeze, hmm? my first Rolls Royce was a phantom. I didn't even... In those days, sir, I didn't even think that there was Instagram or Twitter. We were just leaving. I was only, I, I can't remember the age, but that was more than a decade ago. So, but we've lived our life with integrity. And someone comes in 2022 because they see me on Instagram. And I'm not like their pastors. And they say, that's the, be careful. That's, I think that's the Antichrist. I'm thinking, wow. <laughs> so I was so go on and um, um, Willy Willy Gavin. <laughs> but go on, please. You see, me, I am the Antichrist. <laughs> if what I Christianity, I am anti that thing, so I am the Antichrist. <laughs> I'm, that nonsense, will not do for like we doctor. Go leave medicine, build church. Make sure that they hear iron you. Doctor, leave medicine, build big church. One of his church members can't sick. He can't drop out for hospital. Can't go and do. Go heal the sick. If that thing that you are practicing there, and you are calling that thing Christian, I am anti that thing. <laughs> am anti in, a, in a country that needs Medicare. In a country that needs Medicare, a doctor opens a church, carries a popular church member to the hospital, and then goes to heal unpopular people in other country. I you really? call really? Christianity? Me, I am anti it, so I am the anti Religion is terrible. Religion is terrible. In Christ, a mega gun. That is <laughs> you are practicing in that country. Oh. Where but, but, but you get 500 key. If that's in a Christianity, you know, you know, our conversation today, you said there's only one fundamental in Christianity or in, in faith. Faith. You believe that Jesus died and resurrected. I don't know what I so, for, so as long as you are not taking time. Or offering you are antichrist, even if you believe Jesus resurrected. I don't understand. But but again, religion is mad. It, it it brainwashes people to a point of no return. And that the generation we inherited, the it, it ruined Africa. Mm. Right? Trust that 
one day the people will rise up and say it's enough. Until then, people like us are watching from a distance. Can I say one more thing that is real? Sure, people, Pastor. People see us as different, but I'm saying the Ayatollah of Iran um, uprooted the Shia of Iran because he stayed in France speaking. People say, you just sit in London and you're talking about Nigeria. I do more in Nigeria than all the churches there. And I've said this publicly. If someone says, oh, we do more, please put your record, make it public. Don't say, oh, we do our thing secretly to God. Because how do we account for that? In the country we are living, they ask you for accountability. So when it comes to doing for Nigeria, and we don't do because we have money. Think about it. What, what money do we have compared to those who plunder Nigeria religiously and politically? Mm, mm. So you can't tell me, oh, because you're in London, the Ayatollah spoke from Paris and changed the share of Iran when they thought they had more money and more power with the West. It changed the gov gov government of, of the country. So all I'm saying is that those who are like minds, we believe in Christ, we believe, but we're not going to submit ourselves to the religious order of those who are of Nigeria. We will not flinch. We, we will not. Process, we have not. So we're not going to I will not submit to my father's ideology. It did him no good. No. I will not submit to my father's ideology. It did her no good. I am here to correct and put them on a path that they should have been on if they had allowed the black man to evolve. Yeah, I agree. But they truncated our evolution. They aborted our original direction. And they gave us an inherited, regurgitated ideology that to serve those who started it, except to enslave us. So... That is why a documentary like Bigger Than Africa is a must watch for anyone who is African. Netflix is very affordable. Even in this Nigeria today where they charge you maximum dollars, and Netflix never goes off. It is affordable. Yes, I agree. Bigger Than Africa, I, I've never spoken to anyone that is on bigger than Africa or director. I've never, I don't know it. I just tumbled on it. Pastor, and, and it finish. Yes, sir. And it makes me appreciate the society I live in. It's based on meritocracy. This is merit. It, I've watched it. I can watch it again and again. And I'm a very careful, um, is a watcher, those who criticize movies and all that. And so I've never met anyone who is on that movie. People keep saying that the director is on live. Um, is on the director should send us a message. Um, but anyway, the name is Bigger Than Africa. Africa. Just check I, it on. Bigger I've, Africa. I've made all major CEOs in the UK watch it. And I You've don't made all CEOs in the UK watch it. I made them. I made them. Like, made, like, are you watching a video call me? Watch it so that you don't talk to me roughly as a black man. You know, so awesome, yeah. awesome. I appreciate you, sir. Before we go, I want to quickly address what one guy said. I pinned a comment. Poetry doctor diary. I don't block you, but normally I block people like you because I really don't like people that don't have said. He said the guest talking cannot correct that the freeze that name Jesus Christ is the foundation of Christianity. You leave that name out, you are an antichrist. Let me read it to you very quickly. I will not waste your time. Chapter 9, verse 9. John said, Master, we saw someone driving out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he's not one of us. They were driving out demons in Name. When this scripture was written, the name Jesus did not exist. As a matter of fact, the name Jesus did not exist for another 1,600 years. There, was no J, there is no J in Hebrew, no J in Aramaic. Even in Greek, the name was Jesus. 
English did not have a J until after 1611. The original King James Version, 1611 edition, I've read, there's no J. Jerusalem is Jerusalem. J was a letter introduced later. So if you tell me the name Jesus, that is a 400 year old name, is the foundation of a 2000 year old religion, your brain needs rewiring. We can disagree and agree. You can say it's an anti, is, 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 is a nickname, or is the, we can go, but the name is the foundation of Christianity. Let me tell you, when Christianity was founded, that name did not exist historically, and I can prove this to you. So, uh, Mr. Poetry Doctor Diaries, please don't live and exhibit your ignorance. It's not an ignorance displaying pool party. Pastor Toby, over to you. Uh, okay, I love that answer and I agree with it. Um, I, I don't answer religious people because they are, it's a mental state. It, it's a mental state. It's not it's not them. Most of them are not well. That's what I've discovered over 17 years and plus years. So people like that, sometimes they are not well. It's not even, and you know, if you live in a country like Nigeria where there's much struggle, it, it, it can affect your mental well-being. So I'm not, uh, but you, you've given him a emo high, very good answer. And I, I've learned from your answer. Like I always do. Oh, no, Pastor Toby, no, no. don't put this on me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let me tell you what I that, you know, The only thing that's been uh, um, used and... Uh, no, uh, let me tell you what I learned from Pastor Toby. I know the theory. Pastor Toby knows the practical of Christianity. Every day, I look at Pastor Toby like this. Oh, wow. So Acts chapter is actually possible in real life. Oh, wow. So John chapter 2 is actually possible in real life. I've seen Pastor Toby, without him knowing, live the practical of Christianity. Pastor Toby's car is everybody. Pastor Toby's house is everybody's. Pastor Toby's clothes are everybody's clothes. I was in his service. I've not been to a church in five years. I attended World Nations physical service and i learned a lot maybe not so much theory but more the practical i am lacking let me tell you theory now 40 marks practical now 40 marks objective now 20 marks now so they do exam so combined we have 80 percent already we win <laughs> so if i saw the wedding in Cana, Pastor Toby enacted it. The wedding in Cana. The only problem is Pastor Toby did not allow the wine to ever end. They were bringing the crystal. <laughs> so it was no longer crystal, it was crystal. <laughs> the big, big bottle. I think crystal in that size. If I say, hey. Oh, I had some. That was some of the best sushi in London with caviar uh, and. and, and <laughs> my chopsticks and i was just demolishing away <laughs> and guess what it wasn't pastor toby's child getting it wasn't his cousin or his brother it was a church member and pastor toby brought david o and threw down the house did it a, a part and i was like this is this reminds me of john chapter two so pastor toby you might be saying you are learning the theory from me <laughs> Me, I'm learning the practical from you. And they watch you every day. They take notes. Sometimes I call my pastor. To, How did you do this? 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 We they learn. Oh. I'm learning. Too, sir. I'm so, learning. I, yeah, let me reiterate, sir. Thank you for those kind words, sir. Um, and I've always posted in your cerebral mind. You, I think. The kind of knowledge God has given you about the Bible is amazing. I don't care if Nigerian pastors hear it or not. I don't need them. Uh, when people comment about me in Nigeria, the question is, please, for God's sake, with due respect, what do I need you for? I don't understand. I don't get it. Like, we sit here in this house and we're thinking, 
honestly, sincerely, who are these people? <laughs> but again, and seriously, because I've never gained anything from Nigeria with due respect. Never. Ever. And there is no, you can't count 10 black men in the world and they say they have more than what we have. People don't know what the nation family has because we won't be showing that on Instagram. But that apart, I appreciate your cerebral mind, your Bible knowledge. I think it's amazing. I've told those who care to hear. Most Nigerian African pastors don't care to hear because they just want to keep their pockets. And I get that economy. Um, so I appreciate you. And, you know, I almost dodged out of the life tonight, but now I'm thinking... I said, no, Pastor Toby, I'm not doing this alone. You are coming here to join us. Now I'm thinking it's, it's fun to be here, really. I'm happy. Honestly, I appreciate it. And um, we will build hospitals in 700 local governments in Nigeria. Yes. I've never said something that I want. Build hospitals. No, no, I don't what? need church. Them the hope. You give them real hope. Yes, and we will. We will, and with your support, you've seen what we've done, and we're doing with World's Nation, the entrepreneurs, and we will keep doing that. One million opposition or enemy cannot make me flinch, because I know the source of wealth, and God helped us. That's all I mean. They can't flinch me, and we will not dip our hands into anything wrong. So, People think that people think that we wear designer. That what is clothes to me? Designer and cars. Really, if we want to show wealth, it's not clothes and cars. If I really want to show wealth, but humbly, I would say I work for Christ and I would obey whatever He says. But time and His servants like yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Toby. This has been a lovely experience. Um, it, it's it's good for cerebral minds and forward thinking people to together and try to bail us out what our parents put us into. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we do our political talk. We're going to have you it. Know keen, you know. Everybody is ready for this conversation. So we'll definitely have you will see the people that will come on. You will be mad, I'm telling you. Once we get off, I'll send you a WhatsApp message. Let's pick it up from. Call me on the signature. The signature. Call me on. Oh signature. yes, 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 yes. One day, I'll go. Oh, me too. I'll go and bring my own. It's just that my own screen don't spoil. So coming to London, I'm dropping it. They have it serviced. Lady, <laughs> my very good friend, the brother Toby Adegboiga. Uh, thank you for joining us, and thank you for the good work you're doing in Nigeria. Um, for our feeding exercise this month, he said he's. 500,000 naira to support us. This is the man. He supports any time we feed people. The money is not coming to me. One naira is not coming to me. We are going to cook, buy sanitary towels. Uh, we wanted to tone it down a little this month, but with, with this influence, we have full, uh, what is it called? A full, the, the, the full haul. So, Thank you so much, Pastor Toby. You didn't want this mentioned, but I've mentioned it. There's nothing you can, you cannot beat me. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, don't forget why we came here. Make sure you watch Together Africa on Netflix. You would call me back and thank me for it. Take care. God bless. And have a special morning.